camera technology is moving fast, and every new release comes with the challenge of keeping up with or surpassing the competition. If you've been keeping an eye on the latest developments, you've probably wondered, what's next for Canon? The EOS R1 was a powerful machine, but with Sony pushing boundaries with its A93, the question arises, will Canon respond with a global shutter sensor in the upcoming EOS R1 Mark II? If they do, it could be a breakthrough. But is it all good news? Or are there concerns that could hold Canon back? Let's break it all down and see what we might expect from Canon's next flagship mirrorless camera. If you've ever captured a fast-moving subject and noticed strange distortions in your image, you've probably encountered the rolling shutter effect. A traditional sensor scans the image line by line, which can cause issues when shooting high-speed action. A global shutter, however, captures the entire frame in one go, eliminating these distortions completely. That's why sports and wildlife photographers have been excited about Sony's A93, which features this technology. Right now, Canon's flagship mirrorless camera, the EOS R1, still relies on a fast-stacked CMOS sensor. It's quick, but not as quick as a true global shutter. If Canon wants to make a serious impact with the R1 Mark II, adopting a global shutter seems like the next logical step, but implementing it isn't as simple as flipping a switch. There are challenges involved and Canon has to make sure the benefits outweigh any potential downsides. So what about Canon's track record? Canon has always been known for developing its own imaging sensors rather than relying on third-party suppliers like Sony. This independence allows them to experiment and fine-tune their technology to fit their specific needs. If you go back a few years, you'll find that Canon has already dabbled in global shutter technology. Back in 2016, they released the EOS C 700GS, a high-end cinema camera featuring a global shutter sensor. It wasn't exactly consumer-friendly at a hefty $40,000, but it proved that Canon had the capability. Since then, they've continued filing patents related to global shutter and high-speed sensor designs meaning they've been working on this technology behind the scenes for quite some time. This raises an interesting point. If Canon has had global shutter technology for years, why haven't they implemented it in their flagship mirrorless cameras yet? The answer likely comes down to cost, complexity and maintaining image quality. A global shutter can improve speed, but it also presents challenges particularly with dynamic range and noise performance. Canon has probably been refining the technology to make sure it's ready for widespread use. Meanwhile, Sony's A93 is currently leading the way in global shutter performance. It has a 24.6 megapixel full-frame sensor and can shoot at an incredible 120 frames per second with full autofocus and auto exposure. That's more than double what Canon's EOS R1 can do. For professional photographers, speed matters. Capturing fast moving subjects with pinpoint accuracy is essential for sports and wildlife photography. Right now, Sony holds the edge and if Canon doesn't step up soon, they could risk losing market share in this high-speed segment. Canon has always been a dominant player in professional cameras, but if they don't introduce global shutter technology soon, they might struggle to keep up. This is where the EOS R1 Mark II comes in. If Canon wants to make a bold statement, it needs to go beyond just slight improvements and deliver something that truly challenges Sony's dominance. A global shutter could be that feature. Canon has made its stance clear. 
speed is the priority for the R1 series. Canon's chief Takura stated in an interview that the company isn't planning on releasing multiple flagship models. Instead, they're putting all their best technology into one camera. That means no separate high-resolution model. If you want high resolution, Canon suggests looking at the R5 series instead. This approach makes sense, but it also means that the R1 Mark II has to be the best possible version of itself. If Canon isn't playing the megapixel game, then they need to dominate in speed, autofocus and responsiveness. That's where a global shutter could be crucial. If they can combine their already excellent autofocus system with a sensor that eliminates rolling shutter, they might just create the ultimate high-speed camera. As exciting as global shutter technology is, it's not without its drawbacks. One of the biggest concerns is dynamic range. Traditional sensors use rolling shutters that allow for more flexible exposure times, which helps in capturing a wide range of details from shadows to highlights. Global shutters, however, capture the entire frame instantly, which can sometimes lead to less dynamic range and slightly noisier images in low light conditions. For Canon, this is a critical area to refine. If they move to a global shutter, they need to ensure that image quality doesn't take a significant hit. Professionals rely on Canon cameras for their color science and dynamic range, and any compromise in these areas could be a deal breaker for some photographers. There's also the issue of cost. Global shutter sensors are more complex and expensive to manufacture. If Canon integrates this technology into the R1 Mark II-I, will it drive the price up significantly? The original R1 was already a premium price camera, and adding cutting-edge technology could push it even higher. That might make it less accessible to some professionals and enthusiasts. So, what would make the EOS R1 Mark II a true breakthrough? First and foremost, a global shutter with minimal drawbacks. If Canon can maintain excellent dynamic range and low-light performance, while eliminating rolling shutter issues, they could have a winner. Autofocus will also be a key factor. Canon's dual pixel autofocus system is already among the best, but if they can refine it further to handle 120 frames per second shooting speeds without missing a beat, that would be a huge advantage. Battery life is another important consideration. Shooting at ultra high speeds consumes more power so Canon will need to ensure that the camera can handle long shooting sessions without constantly needing to recharge. Another interesting aspect will be video performance. The global shutter could bring massive improvements for filmmakers, especially in fast-paced environments where rolling shutter distortions are most noticeable. If Canon optimizes the R1 Mark II for both still photography and video, it could attract a wide range of professionals. And let's not forget, beyond Sony, Nikon is also moving toward global shutter technology. After acquiring RED, they now have access to high-end sensor designs, and they already have a strong relationship with Sony's sensor division. If Nikon integrates global shutter sensors into their future flagship models, Canon could find itself in an even tougher spot. The next three to four years will be critical, as more manufacturers adopt global shutter technology, it will eventually become the standard for high-end cameras. Canon has the experience and resources to make this transition smoothly, but they can't afford to wait too long. You know, we've been thinking about what Canon might do with the R1 Mark II, and it could really shake things up in the camera world. If they managed to include a global shutter, they'd solve those annoying distortion problems that happen when you're shooting fast action. That would be huge for sports and wildlife photographers who need every frame to be perfect. 
The tricky part is balancing all the technical elements. Canon's known for their gorgeous image quality and those rich colors that photographers love. They can't afford to lose that magic while chasing speed. Keeping great dynamic range and clean low light performance while adding a global shutter isn't easy. With Sony already showing what's possible with the A9 III and Nikon potentially joining the global shutter club soon, Canon needs to make their move. The camera landscape is changing fast and Canon has always been a leader. If they can pull off a well-rounded camera that combines their excellent autofocus with global shutter technology, they might just set the new standard that everyone else will try to beat. So, that's all about the Canon R1 Mark II. Do let us know what you think about this camera. As for everything else, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon if you want more content like this on your feed.